Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,132. Of course, this week we continue our celebration of the 71st annual Pebble Beach Concours de Elegance. It takes place Sunday, August 21st at the Lodge in Pebble Beach, California. To learn more, get your tickets, go to pebblebeachconcours.net. I hope to see you there. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in beautiful Southern California, Irvine, California, with a very special returning a guest by the name of John, John Kleinert. John, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear and are you ready to release the clutch? Absolutely. I love uh, manual transmissions and I'm right with you. Yeah, we're going to have some fun today. Now, you were last on the show quite a long time ago. You were guest number 333 way, way back in September of 2015. Boy, a lot's happened since then, right? Oh, absolutely. Gosh, to think of the, the changes in, in the automotive world since 2015. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And you're a guy who's been in the automotive world for an incredibly long time. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But before I give you a proper introduction and we talk about the Pebble Beach Concours and your world with Ford Motor Company, what's one little thing that maybe people don't know about you, John, that you'd be willing to share? Well, something I encounter quite often is people think I've always been in California with Ford Motor Company. And actually, I was in uh, Michigan for 16 years in the Dearborn area prior to moving here in 1988 on a two-year assignment, and I'm still here. So people are often surprised. Gosh, we thought you were a native Californian. Actually, I'm a native of North Carolina and went to school in Indiana and New York City and then off to Michigan to Ford Motor Company, which has been my life ever since. But yeah, so I, I can relate to people from all around the country because I've had the privilege of living in a variety of places. Yeah, what fun. Well, you're in a beautiful sunny spot now. Uh, I've got family that lives down there in very near you in Laguna Niguel. So, uh, yeah, you guys uh, live in a beautiful part of the country. Well, let me give you a proper introduction because I think you've been at Ford Motor Company longer than anyone. They must have a whole wing named after you at this point in time uh, because you've been around so long. This is quite a life you've lived. John Clenard has had the good fortune of pursuing his lifelong love of cars as a career. Now in his 50th year, that's right, I just said his 50th year with Ford Motor Company Uh, As a consultant on enthusiast cars and events, he is immersed in the collector car world on a daily basis. In fact, he jumped off a phone call with the Pebble Beach Group just to be on the line with us today. So thank you for that. Beginning in 1972, his career has provided responsibility in projects including the Daytona Pantera, the AC Mark IV Cobra, the Mustang SVO, Ford's return to Formula One racing in the 1980s, the 2005 6 Ford GT, and the current Ford GT, among many, many other projects. And beginning back in 1988, John has organized Ford's annual participation in the Monterey Rolex Reunion and the Pebble Beach Concours d'Alagance, where he is a senior judge now in his 27th year. His recognition in the hobby includes honorary membership, in the Road Racing Drivers Club Lifetime Achievement Award from the Motor Press Guild and Packard's International, the Lee Iacocca Award and the Lauren Tyrone Award from Pebble Beach. What a life you've lived, John. This is incredible. We'll be back in just a minute, but first a word from our valuable sponsors. So give them a little love, a little listen, and we'll be right back. One of your vehicle's interior surfaces that gets a lot of abuse is your dashboard. The sun beats down and those damaging UV rays cause massive heat cycles, resulting in color changes and sometimes cracks. My friends at Covercraft have a great solution for you and for me. Their custom-tailored dash mats protect your dash from heat buildup while providing a stylus solution. You can choose from a variety of styles and colors, including carpet, suede mat, that's the one I have for my vehicles, Carhartt limited edition velour mats, and the Ultimat for trucks and SUVs. Another great benefit of your Covercraft dash mat 
is that it eliminates the harsh glare the sun produces from your dash to the inside of your windshield, which can make driving a hazard. Covercraft's Dash Mat Design Center is located in Arizona, where they know about harsh sun. I've got a special deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 yeah 21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off. Just use the code ya 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? I didn't. Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework. I shopped around and I found American Collectors Insurance. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. So, John, uh, you know, when you think about this, 50 years at Ford Motor Company, my goodness, when you started off on this career path, did you ever dream you would be there that long? I didn't think about it. I, there was certainly no plan, no intention of this, although my life with Ford Motor Company extends beyond that because, funny thing, uh, I had forgotten I had done this, but when I moved from North Carolina to Michigan to start working for Ford, my mom gave me a box of things she had kept over the years, old report cards and so forth, like mothers do. Um, she says, here, here's your life. Take it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it out of my house. <laughs> In there was a theme paper I wrote when I was in the sixth grade, and the, the assignment it was, it was to write a two-page paper about the place you would most like to visit. Here I am in the sixth grade in North Carolina. The paper I wrote was, I'd like to go to Dearborn, Michigan, tour the Rouge Assembly Plant, and meet Henry Ford II. I had totally forgotten that I had written that. So obviously Ford has been on my mind for many, many years, and that was uh, prompted primarily by Ford's total performance campaign in the 1960s, racing, uh, which captured the imagination of many people, and certainly mine. The fact that Ford would take on all comers in racing across the spectrum of motorsport and be successful made quite an impression. And that convinced me that, yes, racing is important to a car company's image, and that's been the case ever since. And I pursued that philosophy with Ford all these years. I couldn't imagine what else I could do. This is just where I like to be. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's pretty incredible when you think about a little boy writing a, a theme paper and where you've ended up and what you've done. I don't, yeah, I don't think anybody could ever plan anything like that. And especially for your career, you know, you've, you're involved in a lot of different things. And before we talk about Pebble Beach and uh, the Laguna Seca historic races, on, on a very grassroots level, um, you've collaborated in Southern California with clubs to present the fabulous Ford's Forever Gathering, uh, which is pretty cool. It takes place, I believe, at the Arendelle Speedway, and this is the 36 years of doing this. Can you talk more about that event? Because it's quite an event. Well, yes, this was something that um, a man named John F. Pepper, the late John F. Pepper, who was with Ford Motor Company in California, back in 1986, he had the idea of getting the various clubs together. Southern California, as everyone knows, is a hotbed of automotive enthusiasm. There are many clubs for all makes of cars, and certainly a lot of Ford and Ford-related clubs for, for Ford, for Mercury, for Lincoln, for Edsel, you name it. So John and Pepper said, let's get all these clubs together, see if we can collaborate and have one big event. And the idea caught on immediately and has been very successful. We've continued over the years. We now have exactly 40 clubs that participate in this. We spend a lot of time planning it. It's a, it's a lot of work for what is a one-day event, but I'll that's bet. the way these things are. And um, it, we got over a thousand cars, wow, of all kinds, everything from Model Ts to Ford GTs, you name it. And it's just a great time. The Ford dealers have a new product display and opportunity for people to 
drive the new cars, own property, and so forth. So it's just a, 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 a Ford celebration. It's called Fabulous Fords Forever, and it's held in April every year. Was at Knott's Berry Farm for many years, and we simply outgrew that, so we now have moved to Irwindale Speedway, and it's a great venue because it's certainly a car-friendly place, and we're doing it every year now for, well, 36 years, and wow. next year will be number 37. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful to resurrect Mr. Henry Ford and take him to that event? Can you imagine him walking around at that event with all those vehicles and the Model Ts to Ford GTs? how wide his eyes would be open. Wow. <laughs> yes. He would think, wow, I created this. This is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> pretty darn cool. Well, another interesting thing and, and very neat thing that you guys created back in 2006, uh, you got together with uh, automotive designer Freeman Thomas, of course, wonderful man who's created some beautiful things and co-founded the original Cars and Coffee in Irvine. Now, this has grown into well over, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of independent events around the world, all different names and things. When I was back at Griot's Garage, I created the idea of caffeine and gasoline, which played off of the cars and coffee because I found out that that had been a trademark name and we technically couldn't use it. But now there's all these different events. You and uh, Freeman getting together to do this, did you ever dream it would grow into what it is? We didn't. And I, I certainly credit Freeman primarily with this this phenomenon. For several years in Crystal Cove, a, a oceanside uh, strip mall just south of Newport Beach, there was a, a spontaneous gathering of car enthusiasts. And the local residents became increasingly displeased with all the noise and congestion. So finally, we were asked to go somewhere else. And at Crystal, Crystal Cove was that location. Well, Freeman and I just spontaneously thought, you know, we've got a big parking lot at our Ford building in Irvine. Why don't we just invite people over that over to our place and just give it a try? And Freeman was sitting at his desk. And I said, "Crystal Cove, CC. Let's call it Cars and Coffee." So that's it. That's <laughs> so how that, it was created. Just, well, there you go. You know, I mean, this is a little bit of yeah. history created here. I had no idea, Chris, because I know where Crystal Cove is and uh, Cars and Coffee. Okay, kind of makes sense. So we invited people over just on a trial run, and that trial lasted for five years, and uh, <laughs> then we ran out of room at our place. We never had any any thought of commercialization. It was purely volunteer and just for the fun of it. Uh, Ford Motor Company loved the idea, and they did support us with uh, catering and security and so forth and let us use the Ford building for facilities. Much of the credit goes to the Ford, Ford folks in Michigan for saying, yep, you guys are crazy. Go do it. We love it. It was very successful. Anyway, so when we finally had to close down, other people said, well, we like this idea. Let's go somewhere else. So it has migrated around Orange County. Now in San Clemente, there is a very large every Saturday Cars and Coffee. And the idea has spread worldwide. Um, again, no no formal organization. The spontaneity and, and flexibility of these events is, I think, part of their appeal because you just go when you want to go. And if you don't want to, you don't. It's incredible. I've been to the one in Orange County and it's insane. Uh, huge parking lot at a shopping center there. The cars that show up are just phenomenal. Uh, the people, and since I've got ties back to Southern California, I always run into friends when I'm back down there and I go to that event. This is absolutely wonderful. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about Pebble because your involvement with Pebble Beach Concour, boy, uh, you're like the king of longevity with everything you touch. I mean, you've been involved as senior judge uh, at Pebble, our senior judge, and you've been doing this for 27 years. And of course, the tie into with the Monterey Rolex reunion. But let's stick with Pebble Beach Concours right now. What does that event mean to you? Well, I'll use a term that a lot of other people use. It is the Super Bowl of the collector car world. There's no place, there's no event like Pebble Beach. It really is. And quite frankly, it's moving to a lot of the people who drive their cars onto the field thinking, gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm really here. Yes. Um, because the cars the cars come from all around the world. And it's trite to say, but it's accurate to say that every car that is there is a winner, even if they don't win that day. The selection committee is a very, very knowledgeable group of about 30 people who vet every application. And so the first step in the judging process is, in fact, the selection committee. And if a car doesn't um, impeccably pass the criteria that that committee has, it will not be accepted. So every car that's there is is over the top. 
and then to compete amongst those cars for ultimately best of show, wow, that is just, you know, it's like winning the Super Bowl. That's the magnitude of it. And there is a tradition, a spirit, a constant pursuit of excellence that pervades the event. You know, lots of Concord events all around the world. And everybody says, yes, we want to be like Pebble Beach. Well, sure, it's a great thing to aspire to, but only Pebble Beach will be like Pebble Beach. It's just they're just, you know, they've got it. They've got it down. <laughs> oh, well, no kidding. I mean, this is a 71st year, so th- that comes with the longevity and building and credibility and all the different parts that are involved with this. You know, I mentioned I had since I'm dedicating this week to Pebble Beach on Monday, I had uh, Kim McCullough and she's going to be driving her hot rod onto the lawn, which is a, a pretty cool thing. And I'll tell you, John, this year I get to do something new. This is my 32nd time going to Pebble Beach. I'm going to be driving onto the lawn. Now I'm going to be a passenger. I won't be driving the car, but I'll be with one of your esteemed judges, Diane Brandon, who's a Rolls Royce and Bentley expert, been judging there for 32 years, I believe, in a 1953 Bentley R-Type Graber drophead coupe that was flown in from Japan. So I get to drive in and do the Queen's wave to all the paparazzi, which is going to be very, very <laughs> special for me this year. Uh, I'm so looking forward to it. So yeah, this is one of those lifetime things. And I tell listeners, if you've not been to Pebble Beach and you've thought about going, uh, you have to make plans. You have to make plans early. But if you can be there this year, you can go buy a ticket. You can walk in and enjoy uh, a wonderful, wonderful day with John and I and so many people. You know, I like to ask people about mentors in their life, what I call driving inspirations. You've worked with some incredible people at Ford Special Vehicle Operations. And and I'll name just a few, but I want you to maybe today, I know you can't pick just one, but maybe for today, pick one that stands out and share a story. People like Dan Gurney, Phil Hill, Carol Shelby, Parnelli Jones, all childhood heroes, I understand, of yours. If you had to pick just one today to talk about that has been a, a strong mentor in your life, who would that be? Well, amongst those four, it's an impossible choice. I would <laughs> I say know. all of the above. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell a story about Carol Shelby. Carol Shelby, he was the consummate salesman for sure. And the saying goes, to sell something, you have to first sell yourself. And that was Carol Shelby. When I was a student in college in 1967 in North Carolina, a classmate invited me to go with him to Sebring to the 12-hour race. So, of course, I preferred doing that versus studying, so we went. I didn't know when he uh, asked that he, in fact, was John Holman's next-door neighbor of Holman Moody, and he was able to get – he got uh, uh, Shelby pit pass credentials for us through John Holman. So we showed up the day before the race, walked into this big hangar where the Ford cars were being prepared, and as luck would have it, off in a corner, watching over all of this all by himself, was Carol Shelby. So my friend Bill and I walked over very boldly and said, hello, Mr. Shelby, just like to say hello. And I figured he'd say, yeah, that's great, and he would send us on our way. We had a good 10-minute intimate conversation where he focused on the two of us like we were the only people on the planet. I was so impressed with, with this. You know, He had many more important things on his mind, but he, he spent time with us. And that, that was in 1967. In fact, actually, the car that we were quote-unquote assigned to, won the race. It was the Ford Mark IV that McLaren and Andretti drove to win. Well, that was great. Went back to school and on with my wife and on to graduate school and so forth. Not imagining that I would end up a couple of decades later working intimately with Carol Shelby. And indeed I did. Um, and I went to many events with Carol. I was involved with him and with Ford Design and Engineering and creation of a couple of cars that he was involved with. So I worked with him very closely years later. And he was always the same Man, he would greet everybody. He had infinite patience. He would autograph anything, <laughs> anywhere. Um, you know, but he wasn't doing this for um, self-serving reasons. He just loved people. And that that sold him, sold him to many people. And then and on top of that, he delivered the goods. He actually did succeed in his enterprises. And, you know, just a, so, yes, he was certainly an inspiration. Absolutely. The fact is that with Joe Shelby, Everyone was important, and that's that's a great thing to live by. Everybody is important. So that was a lesson from Carol Shelby. What a wonderful story. Thanks for sharing that. Man, that is absolutely incredible. We'll take a short break and thank our sponsors when we come back. I want to talk a little bit about maybe some of the challenges in putting on these massive events that you're involved with. That might be a nice focus for the challenge question here. So sit tight, and we'll be right back. 
I've teamed up with AutoGeek because, well, they've been the leading source of auto detailing products, accessories for more than 20 years. Their Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax is specially formulated from Brazilian Carnuba Wax. It's easy to apply on any paint surface and provides that warm glow that we love, especially me on my vehicles. You're going to love it too. A favorite of car shows countrywide, Pinnacle Sovereign Paste Wax from AutoGeek wipes on easily, requires no drying time, is easy to remove, and provides up to 90 days of protection against damaging environmental contaminants. This wax is designed to exceed the standards of the most discriminating enthusiasts and collectors. Go to autogeek.net to get yours for the best product selection on the internet today, along with their very skilled technical support. Autogeek.net. That's where I go for all my detailing needs. That's autogeek.net. Have you looked under your hood recently? The average car today has more than 70 computers and 100 million lines of code. Today and tomorrow, being a professional technician requires an understanding of technology, computers, and electrical systems that are highly advanced and very complex. Cars yeah is honored to support TechForce Foundation as our charity of choice. Their efforts to help young people pursue a technical education and a fulfilling career as automotive techs is the key to an inspired life. Through scholarships, grants, and good old-fashioned hands-on experiences with vehicles, TechForce and Cars yeah are working together to connect young people with viable careers. Join us and learn more by visiting techforce.org today. Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code CARS YEAH when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So, John, I always ask my guests what I call the challenge question. I want to direct this towards these incredible events that you put on because, oh, my gosh, uh, the Ford event, you know, 1,000-plus cars, Pebble Beach. I can't even imagine the logistics of putting events like this together and all the other things you've worked on. Can you maybe share a big challenge that you faced in a particular event? But more important, what was the lesson learned that you could take forward that might share some ideas for somebody listening who – thinks they might want to start a little event like a cars and coffee. Well, I guess the old saying, plan ahead. Can't start planning too soon for any event. And as the event comes closer and closer on the calendar, things snowball into more and more and unanticipated questions and you know issues to address and so forth. So I think uh, just having a lot of lead time, for example, the Fabulous Fords event, we spend five months, our group of the 40 car clubs, five months in regular meetings to go through every little detail and the little things are what matter in making events successful, uh, making people happy that they were there and being recognized and so forth. So I think attention to detail is the key thing. Just immerse yourself in the in the project and you know, why awake at night thinking what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, then nothing will go wrong. Yeah. Um, they're just, you know, they're saying that the, the five P's prior preparation prevents poor performance. That's something that a guy at Ford told me years ago. So just, you know, plan ahead. And, you know, it, you know having enthusiasm for what you're doing is essential. Otherwise, there's not going to be the, the endurance to do all of this. So I'm very fortunate that I'm, I'm doing what I love to do and I don't mind. Spending lots of hours doing it. Great advice. Yeah, you can never start too early. And we talk about that preparation is the key to success in racing. Of course, preparing before you get to the track with events, it's the same way. You know, I ask about bucket list items, but I want to twist this up a little bit. Are there any great Fords that are going to be on the lawn at Pebble this year that you're really looking forward to seeing? The big feature this year is Lincoln because we're celebrating 100 years of Lincoln. It's Lincoln Centennial. 
And we will have Lincolns on, on the field from 1922, which was the first year, through 1962. That's on the judging field. And then we'll have a, a concept car on the concept lawn. And then in Concord Village, which is a fairly new establishment, it's at the top of Peter Hay Hill, we will have a display with another Lincoln concept car and the full line of current Lincolns. So it's going to be Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln all over the property, which is great. Uh, Edsel Ford I was uh, instrumental in, in persuading his father, Henry Ford, to purchase Lincoln, and then Edsel became the president of Lincoln, and through his, his artistic, um, sophisticated taste, he led Lincoln into, into elegance. So it's very appropriate that Lincoln would be in this concord elegance, for sure. I'll come back to that in a moment. The other features are, anniversary, let's see, the 90th anniversary of the 1932 Ford hot rod. The 32 Ford is, you know, it is the car that begat many hot rods and still does to this day. So it would be a great array of 32 Fords on the grounds. And another feature is 100 years of the Le Mans 24-hour array. Actually, 2023 is the centennial, but the organizers at Le Mans decided to roll out a global year-long celebration celebrating 100 years of their race, and it will begin in the uh, the Monterey Pro Beach weekend at the Rolex Reunion with a display of Le Mans cars. And then I think it's going to be 24 Le Mans cars for 24 hours at Pebble Beach on display in a class there. And that will include four GTs, of course. So we're very pleased at Ford Motor Company that it's Lincoln and it's 32 Fords and it's Le Mans four GTs. The uh, trifecta. A big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow. Uh, it's going to be absolutely incredible. Well, I like to ask about special vehicles. And I know you've had many special vehicles in your life, including, of course, many Fords. But there's some other cars that you've had in your life as well. Is there one maybe you could share today that really stands out for you? Oh, gosh. I guess as, as evidenced by my involvement with cars and coffee, I love them all. I, I just like cars. My very first car, which I managed to buy brand new, was a 1965 Austin Healey Sprite. I saved for years and years. Uh, as a, Starting, I think, when I was maybe 11 years old, I thought, I'm going to have a car. And so every penny I could get my hands on, mowing loans, you name it, I saved up. And I was able, at age 16, to pay $1,800 for a brand new Austin Healey Sprite. Wow. And I drove that car... I drove it through college. This was in North Carolina, and they have weather in North Carolina. I had this, my, my philosophy, philosophy was I will never put the top up on this car. It's always <laughs> going to be top down. I don't care what. If it's snowing, I don't care what. I was just, you know, I was I was a village idiot for sure with this, but that was what I did. I don't I did. know about that. Let's just call you the village enthusiast. <laughs> Well, I, I, I commuted in my second year in, in college from my home to the school, and it was a 14-mile drive, including along Interstate 40, the highway. And one winter morning, I was the only car on my side of the highway, you know, plowing my way through the snow with the top down. And along comes in the other direction a highway, a department uh, of highways um, snowplow. Oh, I, I'm waiting for this. Snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, throwing snow into my lane. Well, sure enough, kaboom, I was buried in snow. The whole car was filled with snow. The windshield wipers swept it away. I just kept on going. That was it. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And later, in fact, and then, in, let's see, in 1972, when I joined Ford, um, I bought for $300 a Volkswagen Carmen Gear convertible that I commuted from Dearborn, where I lived, out to Wixom. And in the wintertime, this car had no heater. And I was using the dice scraper on the inside of the windshield oh, oh while gosh. driving down Interstate 96. So, wow. so uh, yeah, I don't know. I, my <laughs> IQ must not be very high. <laughs> but anyway, I just, I just, I just, I love cars. I just love all kinds of cars. And, and you know, happily, Ford is making some terrific cars today. I have a, a 2019 Fiesta ST that I absolutely adore. Oh, it's just a fine. ball to drive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, so, yeah, I just, I like all, all kinds of cars. Well, you and I share a few things here. My my car in high school was a 67 car Magia. Uh It did have a heater wow. that worked. Yeah, but I uh, love that car. <laughs> and I promptly, I, right after bought it, tore it apart, rebuilt it. Uh, I called it my poor man's Porsche because that's what I really wanted, but I couldn't afford. So I painted it a, a mixture of two Porsche colors, Guards Red and Tangerine, uh, which made for an interesting color. And I understand you raced vintage cars. I raced a Lotus 18. You raced a Lotus 23 and a Formula Ford. So we've got a few things in common here. Yes, absolutely. That's great. 
Very fun. Very fun. So I'm going to crawl in your head a little bit here. I did not ask you this question when you're on the show before because I didn't have this question. I'm going to be a car psychologist. If you were reincarnated, pun intended, as a vehicle, what would John be? But more importantly, why? Well, I think I would be my Fiesta ST. Oh, because, okay. You know, fun, uh, unassuming, um, you know, under the radar, but very, very, uh, very quick and just fun to be with. So, yeah, yeah well, I'd I, go for that. I think that fits your personality, John. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like it. Well, is there a great book that you'd like to share with our listeners today that you've read perhaps in the last year or two? Well, actually, on the Pebble Beach theme, let me mention, conveniently enough, Pebble Beach now has available a brand new book that I recently got, which is uh, 70 Years Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. And looking at the Pebble Beach website, you can find it listed as a beautiful book that goes through the history of the event over the years, photographs of cars by decade, uh, introduction to the personalities. It really tells the story and lots of interviews with with notable people, such as Edsel Ford, among others. It, it's a great compendium of the the magic of the Pebble Beach Conqueror. Um, that, and that book is it's new, it's currently available, and I would recommend that. And uh, you know, that, that checks the box for me. It's just a great book. Absolutely. And that book was written by David Lillywhite, who's the publisher of the great new Magneto magazine. So he was a guest here on the Cars yeah podcast. I'll put a link on uh, John Shunner's page to the Pebble Beach Concord website. Are they easy to find? Just Google it. You go right there and get your hands on this book. Uh, a winner for sure. So I, I like to ask my guests or suggest my guests that I would enable them to go on what I call the ultimate drive where I offer any car and you can be with anybody living or someone who's passed and you can be anywhere. I'm going to twist yours up a little bit here and focus on the Pebble Beach Concord. The Pebble Beach Concord takes place on a Sunday. The Thursday before, they have a wonderful event called a tour where many of the vehicles that will be on the lawn line up early in the morning and head out for a little drive. And then they end up in Carmel. They have lunch and go back over. And what's great about this event for you listeners is if you go to Car Week in the middle of the week and you're there on Thursday, you can be there to watch the cars leave and you can hustle over to Carmel and watch them come in. I got to ride back in 2019 before COVID kind of messed things up in a beautiful old Rolls Royce. One of my past guests was in the tour, beautiful yellow Rolls Royce. So I got to participate in this tour. So today, John, if you could take any vehicle and drive it on the tour, this coming Pebble Beach tour Thursday, what would that vehicle be and who would you want to have in the car with you? That's not an easy question. <laughs> Why would I ask you easy questions? <laughs> but, <laughs> I think uh, given this, the celebration of Lincoln, I would go with the 1922 Lincoln okay. that is there. And having uh, Edsel Ford as my my uh, companion would be great just uh, to talk about his grandfather and experience this car that started it all. Uh, that would be a, be a great experience. I think you picked a winner there. That would be sure, for sure. Well, you've taken us on a wonderful journey today, uh, John, and I'm just amazed at the fun things you get to do. Cars Yeah was created to inspire others that they can have fun in the automotive world. And you've got to have one of the best jobs in the world. Uh, planning events, being a part of events, I, I just can't imagine. And getting paid to do so, you figured out how to live the sweet spot in life. Before I let you go, would you share maybe some words of inspiration, a mantra or success quote with us? I think um, going the extra mile, being helpful, anything that a person undertakes, if you go about it with the philosophy of um, how can I help, how can I make a difference, that will assure, that will assure success. Yeah. So many people just want to do what's required and that's that, and that's okay, but people who really succeed go beyond that. Um, there are many people I could cite who do that far more than I do, but clearly it's... it's, it's um, it's the formula for a successful life, I think. Absolutely. How can people learn more about what's going on today at the Ford Motor Company? Well, um, FordMotorCompany.com or simply Ford.com. The website leads to all of our activities, our latest products. Um, you can spend hours uh, having fun just going through the Ford website and Lincoln.com. Uh, either one, depending upon one's uh, flavor of the of the day um ford and lincoln lots going on it's a dynamic time in the industry and oh boy lots of change i've seen <laughs> this since 1972 henry ford ii was still running the company and lee iacocca when i started and 
think of what things were like then and what they're like today. Wow, what a change. And the change is accelerating. But beautiful part of it is that Ford, Ford is a family company. Unlike all the others, um, I interviewed with five companies before I joined Ford, and I could have gone with any of them, three in Europe, two in the U.S. I chose Ford because of the family, and that's a, a, a rare thing. I like to say that Ford is the world's largest family business, and a lot of people who work with the company feel the same way. There is a sense of family and continuity that um, – the company has, and that's carried us more than 100 years, and we'll be fine for the next 100 and beyond, I have no doubt. I think so. We are definitely going through an automotive renaissance right now as we move into the EV world, and all the incredible things are happening and how fast technology is moving. Again, if we could bring Mr. Ford back and show him what Ford is doing today, no doubt he would have a a big smile and very wide eyes uh, just saying, I want to learn more. Tell me, what are you guys doing? This is incredible. I can't even dream of this. Well, it's going to be fun. Again, I want to remind you listeners, we're celebrating this week the 71st annual Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. John and I will be there on the lawn. We'll be there out at the racetrack enjoying all this, and you should be there with us. So to learn more, go to pebblebeach.net. You can get your tickets. Of course, you can get tickets in advance. This is going to be an incredible time. John, I look forward to seeing you uh, at all these events coming up. I want to thank you for coming back on Cars and sharing what a life you've lived. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you on the lawn at the Pebble Beach Concours de Elegance. Terrific. Look forward to it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is going to be fun. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.